Hello everyone and welcome to our service of prayer and Bible reading for the first Sunday after Christmas, December 27th, 2020. In today's format will be taken from the uh, form of prayer for families uh, of the Book of Common Prayer for Canada, and in it will be some elements of the Christmas liturgy of the Church of England. Behold, beloved in Christ, be it at this Christmas time our care and delight to hear again the message of the angels and to journey with Mary and Joseph, in heart and mind, to go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass. A babe lying in a manger, a young boy growing in the delight and the favor of God. Therefore, today, let us read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest God's holy scripture. As we hear once more the tale of the loving purposes of God, from the first days of our disobedience unto the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. First, let us pray for the needs of the whole world for peace on earth and goodwill among his people, for unity and brotherhood within the church he came to build, and especially in those places around the world experiencing political, economic, and social turmoil. And because this is of all things, would re this of all things would rejoice his heart let us remember in his name the poor, the helpless, the cold, the hungry, the disenfranchised, and those in our society who are oppressed or cast aside, the sick and those who mourn, the lonely, those who feel unloved, the weak, the aged, and the young children. We pray as well for those who do not know the Lord Jesus or who have not yet recognized the love he came to bring. Let us pray for all who by sin have grieved his heart. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us but are upon another shore and in a greater light that multitude which, which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, with whom in the Lord Jesus we are forever one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer to the throne of heaven as we celebrate at this most sacred time. May Almighty God bless us with his grace. Christ, give us the joys of everlasting life and unto the fellowship of the citizens of love. May the King of angels bring us all in everlasting life. And through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee in the morning. I will direct my prayer unto thee, and I will look up. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Our Old Testament reading for this morning is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verse, verse 10, to, to chapter 62, verse 3. Isaiah writes, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation, and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soul makes the sprout come up, and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness, and praise spring up before all nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet. Till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will see your vindication and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand a royal diadem in the hand of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our, our psalm for today, appointed for today, is Psalm 148. The psalmist writes, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For at his command they were created, and he established them forever and ever. He issued a decree that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding, you mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers on earth, young men and women, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens. He has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his faithful servants, of Israel, the people close to his heart. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was at the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So this morning, as we read, continue to read through the scriptures, let's read Galatians 4. Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. But when the, set, when the set time has fully come, God sent his son born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The Spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has also made you his heir. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We give you thanks, O oh, Heavenly Father, for the rest of the past night and for the gift of a new day. Grant that we may so pass its hours in the, in the perfect freedom 
of thy service, that at even time we may again give thanks unto thee, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord God, who has bidden light to shine out of the darkness, and who has again wakened us to praise thee for thy goodness, and to ask for thy grace, accept now the offering of our worship and thanksgiving and grant unto us all such requests as may be acceptable to thy holy will. Make us to live as children of the light and heirs of thy everlasting kingdom. Remember, O Lord, according to thy multitude of thy mercies, thy whole church, all who join with us in prayer, and all our brethren wherever they may be, who stand in need of thine aid. Pour down upon us all the riches of thy grace, so that redeemed in soul and body, and steadfast in faith, we may ever praise thy wonderful and holy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Gospel reading for today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 to 40. Here Jesus is presented as a little as a, as a little child in the temple. And the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses. Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be con consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts, and the parents brought in the, the child, Jesus, to do for him what the custom of the law required. Simeon took him in his arms and praised him, and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for the revelation of the Gentiles, and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of, of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken again, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. A sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet named Anna, the daughter of Penuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until, her, until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking toward to the redemption toward the redemption of Jerusalem when Joseph and Mary had done everything required of the law of the Lord they returned to Galilee on their in their own town of Nazareth and the child grew and became strong he was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him this is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In 
so as we continue our, our prayers and Bible readings today, let us say the Apostles' Creed, which can be found on page 10 of our Book of Common Prayer. Together I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And then he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight. The Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So today is the first Sunday after Christmas in the year 2020. We celebrate, celebrate the presentation of our Lord Jesus Christ as a young eight-year-old, eight-day-old child in the temple. One of the great questions that occupies us at this time and has occupied many Christians and Hebrew thinkers and scholars for thousands of years is this. What does being the Son of God really mean? Today, through our reading St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, we are urged to think about how we as people of faith have become children and heirs of the kingdom. Galatians chapter 4, we're told that because God has sent his son, Jesus the Christ, in human form, born under the law of Moses, to be our Savior, we too are then offered the opportunity to live forever in his kingdom as his righteous children. Jesus took human flesh and blood and suffered death on the cross in order to show his fellow sisters and brothers that they no longer had to toil under the burden of the human sinfulness and judgment. As children of the living God, when we act under the direction and authority of God the Father, the only judge we truly have to fear is God himself. When we really see our Creator God as Abba, Father, in the English translation, probably Daddy. We realize that the letter of the law can often be taken as gospel when the true spirit of the law is what is important. The royal law of love for God and love for neighbor and love for self must be seen as the key to being right with God. Inhuman in every respect, Jesus is able to harness a power that is greater than all others and to be a merciful and faithful mediator in the service of God the Father. As the ultimate and final sacrifice for the sins of all humanity, he is able to push aside the sin which befalls all humankind. St. Paul reminds us and all Christians, that when things get tough and we begin to waver in our faith, we should remember Jesus. We should remember Jesus as our Savior and our brother. And coming into the world as a helpless baby and being subjected to the immeasurable, to immeasurable suffering, he is then able to be an example to those who themselves are being tested with the veracities of life. 
Luke, in today's gospel reading, recounts the story of how Jesus' parents obeyed Jewish law by bringing him, their firstborn son, to the temple when he was eight days old. The offering of a pair of turtle doves or, or two young pigeons tells us that they were, they were poor. But nonetheless, through his circumcision, Jesus is made a full-fledged member of the household of God. In ancient Israel, the eldest male in a family inherited the father's estate. Our gospel reading for today, however, shows us that people of strong, practiced faith recognize Jesus as the true Messiah, and in so doing, become heirs of God's kingdom, no matter what their worldly circumstance. Joseph and Mary arrived at the temple with, with Jesus, their eight-day-old son, and Simeon the priest broke into song, for he knew that this that his lifelong ambition had been fulfilled. To see the Messiah as, as the Holy Spirit had promised. He could then die in peace. Luke tells us, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for the revelation of the Gentiles, and the glory of your people Israel. Luke chapter 2, verses 28 to 32. Simeon understood that this little baby was nothing less than the true offspring of God. In Luke, we also hear how Jesus' Jesus's arrival is an answer to prayer for the prophetess Anna. Having spent the better part of 84 years of life praying and fasting at the temple in anticipation of the, of the Redeemer's arrival, she had finally seen the Lord's Messiah face to face. For Anna, this child was sent by God to be the Redeemer of Israel and the savior of all God's people, fully human and fully divine. So in answering our question posed at the beginning of, of this sermon, what does it mean to be a son of the living God? Those who do not know God are slaves to the world. In Jesus, however, God offers an example of life eternal that will eliminate the scourge of death and cast aside the devil for all eternity, making us sons and daughters, heirs of the Most High God. Friends, let our faith and dedication to God and His Word, like Simeon and Anna, be sufficient for us to recognize God's Messiah when he comes and make us heirs, fellow sons and fellow daughters through adoption and grace of God's kingdom for all eternity. With this we ask, and all and these and other blessings we ask in Jesus' name, and for his sake. Amen. And now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, we all praise, honor, dominion, and glory from this day and forevermore. Amen. Friends, our help is in the name of the Lord, who has made heaven and earth. God of every nation and people, from the very beginning of creation, you have made manifest your love. 
when our need for a savior was great, you sent your son to be born of the Virgin Mary. To our lives, he brings joy and peace, justice, mercy, and love. Let Lord bless all who celebrate his coming. May it remind us of the humble birth of Jesus and raise our thoughts to him who is our Emmanuel, God with us and the Savior of all. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who as on, on the, the first night of Christ's nativity, Cause your only Son to be born for our salvation. Grant, we pray, that our celebration and thanksgiving, in which are shown the wonders of Christ's sacred birth, that all those who in beholding his majesty shall ponder and adore the mystery of his earthly birth and be filled with your heavenly blessing unto eternal life. We ask this through the same Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Collect for the first Sunday after Christmas. Let us pray together. Almighty God, you have shed upon us the new light of your incarnate word. May this light enkindle in our hearts, shine forth in our lives, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy upon us. O God, the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy upon us. O God, the Son, redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. O God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. O God, the Holy Ghost, Sanctifier of the faithful, have mercy upon us. O God, the Holy Ghost, Sanctifier of the faith, have mercy upon us. O Holy and Blessed and Glorious Trinity, three persons in one God, have mercy upon us. Remember not, Lord, our offenses, nor the offenses of our forefathers. Spare us, good Lord. Spare thy people whom thou hast redeemed with thy most precious blood. Spare us, good Lord. Now the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time as one accord, to make our common supplications unto thee, and doth promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desire and petitions of thy servant, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world the knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his everlasting countenance and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you forever. Amen. 
go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.